Okay, so we're going to start today in an extended child's pose. So if this is uncomfortable for you, that's fine. You can come into a traditional child's pose, but um, for the sake of our theme and focus today, let's go ahead and come into an extended child's pose. You can always bring a blanket underneath the knees if this is uncomfortable. So knees as wide as the yoga mat, big toes are coming together to touch, and we'll start to sink belly, chest, and forehead down to the mat. You can take some gentle swaying motions before you find some stillness if that feels good. If the forehead doesn't completely reach the ground because the shoulders um, and the pectoral muscles are really tight, you can always bring a blanket to rest your head on, or if you have a block or any other sort of prop that's comfortable for you, that's fine. So today we are gonna bring some attention to a muscle called the psoas muscle. And if you don't know the psoas muscle, that's fine. We'll talk about it today. So some people argue that it is the most important muscle in the entire body. And I subscribe to that belief. And I'll explain why throughout our practice today. Um, but for now, I'll give you a brief, um, brief physical breakdown. So the psoas muscle is the deepest muscle in the body. So it sits the most internally. It starts at your T12 vertebrae and runs along all five of the lumbar vertebrae. It then wraps out laterally from the spine, comes through the abdomen, it's the front of the hip, wraps around the groin and connects to the femur. So this muscle is literally the only thing connecting your legs to your spine. And oftentimes, because it's connected to literally every single thing that we do, even sitting, it's very easy to uh, forget about this muscle because we can't necessarily feel it working like we do if we're, you know, working our, our glutes um, or our, our calves or what have you. Uh, but this muscle is responsible for many ailments, but also responsible for many supportive um, functions. So, the psoas muscle, sometimes called the seat of the soul. We're breathing down into our bellies. Imagining our spine lengthening out through the tail and out through the crown. On your next exhale, we're gonna walk the hands over off the left side of the mat, just starting to wake up the spine. Inhale to look forward if you need to find your placement and exhale, we lower forehead back down to the ground. Inhale, our intercostal muscles starting to stretch and release, creating more space in the ribs and lungs. One more big inhale here. And exhale floats you back through center, taking it over to the other side. 
If you need a little bit more of a stretch, if this isn't giving you the intensity that you like, bring your left hand on top of your right hand. One more inhale here. And on the exhale, we come back through center. We press into the tops of the feet, claw through the fingertips, and we're going to come up on all fours for a quick spinal warm up. So, again, setting yourself up for safe success. Knees are right underneath the hips, wrists are right underneath the shoulders. We're pressing into the yoga mat, doming out the chest cavity. Belly button is pulled up to the spine to protect the low back. Gaze is straight down. We inhale, drop the belly, open the chest. Exhale, round through. So even here already, inhale, drop the belly. We are waking up and engaging the psoas muscle. Exhale, round through. Inhale, drop the belly. Keep moving on your own here, exhaling, rounding through our cat's tail pulls close up to the belly button. Exhale, round through. So if we experience issues surrounding the psoas muscle, which honestly we all do in some form or another, it can be from either overstretching or it can be from a shortening up of the muscle or it can be from a weak psoas, so it not being very um, built up with muscle mass. Let's do one more round, cat cows here. Inhale, drop the belly, open the chest, really pressing away from your yoga mats. Exhale, round through. See if you can really exaggerate the dome, bringing the tail really, really close to the midline, dropping the crown. Exhale, we come back to tabletop position. We walk the hands out slightly in space here. So we've got this slight incline from the shoulder all the way down to the wrist. Toes curl under. Maybe you take a moment just to press back on the toes, waking up the feet. We stay here for the inhale and on the exhale, we're sending hips up high as we start to waken up the hamstrings. Here, we're using the psoas muscles because we're activating our center, pulling the belly button back towards the spine. So we're using that front or the, the wrapped around piece of the psoas to activate the abdomen. And the back side of the psoas that's connecting to our spine is alive and active, holding us upright, helping lift the hips up towards the sky. Pedal out your dog here if you need to. Maybe shaking the hips from left to right. And then let's find a moment of stillness for three breath cycles. Inhale down into the belly. Ribs are nice and soft. You should be able to feel the psoas contracting on the exhale as the belly button draws back towards the spine and engaging. One more round, inhale. Exhale. We go on a slow walk up to the front of the mat. So you can get there however you want. You can crisscross walk. Maybe you just take gentle steps on the tiptoes. If you are further along in your practice, maybe you try hopping up to the front of the mat or just taking one giant big step. And when we get there, we fold Uttanasana 
standing forward fold. You can take some gentle sways here. And then we find a moment of stillness. Maybe bending the knees if the hamstrings are really tight today. Maybe you take a bind behind the back if the shoulders are tight. We'll stay for the inhale. And on the exhale, we roll, root to rise, up to Tadasana, mountain, arms come up overhead, palms descend at the heart space. We're gonna combine our two sun salutations that we have been using the most and put them into one warm up flow just to maximize our time here. So we're gonna inhale, arms go down to come up. Exhale, we bend the knees, bending from the hips, we fold. Uttanasana. Inhale, we lift halfway into our figure seven shape, Ardha Uttanasana, halfway lift. Exhale, we fold. Hands come down to the mat. Left foot steps back, right foot steps back. We find ourselves in plank at the top of a push up, Balankasana, excuse me. Inhale, exhale, we shift forward on the toes and lower halfway. Elbows are tightened to the side body. Feet flip. And we press into the hands, opening the chest, upward facing dog. Inhale, exhale, we move from our center, hips up high, downward facing dog. So that part we know, that's our first one. Now we're gonna mix in our second one to complete the round. So we inhale, right leg lifts up high. If this is not something you wanna include today, that's okay. And exhale, right foot steps up between the hands as we come into low lunge. We stay for the inhale. Exhale, we rise, high lunge. Arms come up overhead. Exhale, we open to warrior two, Rebhajasana two. Inhale to shift forward the upper body. Exhale, back arm comes down to the back leg as the front arm reaches up towards the sky or towards the back of your mat. Peaceful warrior. Inhale, exhale. We spiral, hands back down to frame the foot as we pivot on the back foot, squaring the hips to the front of the mat. Again, we bring the right foot back to meet the left and meet back in our downward dog as we take it to the other side. So we inhale, left leg lifts up high, unless you don't want to. Exhale, steps the left foot up, in between the hands, low lunge. Stay for the inhale. Exhale, we rise, high lunge. Arms come up overhead. Inhale. Exhale, we pivot on the back foot, opening up to warrior two. Inhale to shift forward. Exhale, peaceful warrior. Inhale. Exhale, we spiral. And kick it right back up to downward dog, where we stay for the inhale. Exhale sends us up to the top of the mat and we roll up to mountain. Arms come up overhead, descending at the heart space. That's one round. So we're gonna go for, I think five. Five rounds sounds good today. Move at your own pace, add or omit anything that does or does not serve your practice. And I'll give you reminders along the way. The most important one being sticking with your breath. So arms go down to come up on the inhale. Exhale, we fold. Ardha Uttanasana on the inhale. Exhale, Uttanasana. Remember, your breath acts like a balloon. Low lunge, exhale, fuels our movement into high lunge. So a balloon, 
expands when we put air into it. We let go of the seal. The air escapes and the balloon moves. So we should think of the breath with our movement the same way. Other side. When you're in warrior two, we're spiking through, we're putting pressure in the outside of the back foot. Front heel and back arch are in line with each other. And we move from the hip and from the center to draw that foot back, kicking it right back into downward dog. And palms descend. Jump right back into your next one. Maybe you add a back bend into the asana. So the psoas muscle is, like I said, the only connector, the only connecting muscle from the spine to the legs. Literally keeps your legs attached to your body, <laughs> which is amazing that that all falls on one muscle. But the psoas also has fascia or connective tissue that connects to the diaphragm. So the psoas also plays a huge role in your breath and breathing. Structurally, it keeps us upright. It creates a shelf and a home for our internal organs. We use the psoas when we walk. It's the reason you can lift your leg up the stairs or run. We use it when we are sitting, walking, driving our car. And if you have a tight muscle or a tight psoas, possibly from sitting at a desk all day, you may start to experience, or it may be the source of low back pain, sciatica, scoliosis, hip degeneration, digestive issues. Also, if the psoas muscle is tight, it starts to shorten. I think we're going for two more rounds here, wherever you are. The front of that psoas muscle starts to shorten, which is going to create more internal problems. So if it's shortened, it's putting pressure on the internal organs, creating digestive issues, mm -hmm urinary issues, restricts proper fluid movement through the body. You're doing awesome. If you feel like giving up, just stay for one more breath. You can do anything for one more breath. Last one.
you find yourself starting to shake, that's okay. You may view it as a indicator of muscle weakness or being tired, but really you're just waking up energy in your body, trying to figure out where to go and we navigate it with the breath. There we go, almost done. When you reach the end of your round in downward facing dog, we stay for two breath cycles. After your last exhale, we're gonna shift forward. So we're gonna pull from the tail, rounding through the spine, bringing ourselves up into a plank and gently lower yourself down onto your belly. Hands stack underneath the forehead and we take a rest. Very good. So the psoas muscle, we were working it just then with our movements, but we also were activating um, deep and ancient receptors in that muscle. So the psoas muscle is directly connected to the nervous system in the reptilian brain, meaning it's directly connected to our fight or flight response. So because the psoas muscle serves so many physical functions of movement and internal digestion. It is ready for us to spring into action or flight, or excuse me, fight, or curl into a ball in flight. And when we are in constantly in a state of stress from the type of worlds that we live in now, in modern times. Our psoas is constantly uh, activated and engaged, encouraging that shortening of the muscle. One more breath here. And after your next exhale, we'll release, release the forehead from the hands. Hands come down underneath the shoulders, right by the armpit or right in line with the top of the breastbone. We curl the toes under. Inhale. And on the exhale, we're using our breath to fuel our movement, powering up into plank, top of a push-up. Inhale. Exhale. Hips are going up high, downward facing dog. We're just using this as a transition for our next flow. So we inhale, exhale, right foot is stepping up in between the hands and we drop the knee of the back leg. If it's uncomfortable for you to be on your knees, bring a blanket for extra padding right underneath or you can keep the back leg elevated and I'll show you how to do this flow if you don't wanna be on your knees, but first, We'll go through it this way. So we stay here in low lunge. We're gonna stay in each of these positions a little bit longer, but I wanna show you so that I can show those who don't wanna be on their knees what this will look like. Left hand comes right next to the right arch. We inhale, right arm swings up towards the sky. Exhale, right hand replaces the left. We swing left hand up to the sky. Exhale, left hand replaces the right as the right hand comes back to the outside of the right foot. We curl the toes of the back foot under. We lift the hips up and over, coming to straighten the right leg. Right toes pointing up to the sky. If that's uncomfortable, you can always keep the leg bent so that the hamstrings are really tight. And then exhale, we're rolling forward. Right forearm is coming up onto the right thigh. Left foot lifts. Either stay here 
or if you have range to grab your foot, opening up the chest and really, really stretching out that psoas muscle from the abdomen down through the front of the thigh. If this feels really unstable, you can always bring a chair, a couch, something close to you to help keep your balance. And we release coming back into low lunge. To get out, we'll lift that back leg and kick it back into downward facing dog. If you don't want to be on the back knee to do this, we'll come here. And we'll do the same movements just with the back leg lifted. So left hand down, right arm swings. Right arm down, left arm swings. Except this time, instead of rocking back on the knee, you'll keep it lifted, straightening that front leg, bringing the toes up to the sky. And then you can either come down on the knee just for that bend, or you can grab onto something in front of you and practice your balancing that way. So I'll let you decide, otherwise we will move through with the back leg lowered. So we come back into downward facing dog. Left leg comes up between the hands. We lower the back foot or back knee, back foot, low lunge. We're here for two breaths. Really sending the breath down into the front of that right thigh, the front abdomen. Right hand comes right next to the left arch. We inhale, open, left arm up to the sky. We're pressing down firmly through the top of the back foot and through the triangle of our right foot. That's our foundation, that which is touching the earth. Exhale, left hand replaces the right as we open right arm up to the sky. Exhale, right hand releases. We, hands come to frame the left foot. We curl the toes of the back leg under and lift the hips up and over. Left toes come up towards the sky, half pyramid. We're here for one more breath cycle. And exhale, rolls you forward. We come up, forearm onto the thigh as we lift the back leg. Maybe clasping the arch or even wrist to toes. Shoulders, hips, and gaze are squared off to the front of the mat. Exhale, lower, coming back to our low lunge, hands frame the left foot. As we lift the back leg, left comes back to meet the right in our downward facing dog. Let's go one more time on each side. So we inhale, exhale, right foot steps up between the hands, lower or keep lifted the back leg. We're in our low lunge. So here we're getting compression in the psoas, in the abdomen on the right side in the front of the hip and lengthening through the back. On the left side, we're lengthening quite just the opposite, the front of the abdomen, the front of the thigh and giving a nice compression in the back. Inhale, right arm swings up to the sky. Exhale, right replaces left as left swings up to the sky. Chest is wide open. Exhale, hands come down to frame the foot. We lift the hips up and over, sending the toes up towards the sky on the right side. You can either keep the gaze forward or maybe you drop the forehead bowing to your own body. Exhale, we roll through, lifting the back foot. We're here for one more breath cycle. 
And exhale, we gently lower the back foot. Hands come to frame the right as we kick it back into downward facing dog. Left foot steps up on the exhale. Low lunge gazes forward. So spine, neck stays nice and long. We're pressing down firmly through that back foot, firmly through the triangle of our front foot. We're light on the fingertips. Right hand comes to left arch. We lift left hand up to the sky. Exhale, left hand replaces the right as we lift right hand up to the sky. Exhale, hands come to frame the left foot as we sink the hips up and back, straightening the left toes, either bowing or keeping our gaze forward. Exhale, we bend the left knee slightly as we roll through. Forearm to thigh as we lift the right leg. We're pressing firmly into that front foot. One more breath here. And exhale. We release, hands come to frame the right foot. We lift the back leg as we kick the right, or excuse me, the left foot back to meet the right. We're in the top of a plank. We stay for the inhale. Exhale, we drop the knees to the mat, big toes to touch. Widen your stance and we sink into extended child's pose. One more inhale here. And on our exhale, we press into the tops of the feet, claw through the fingertips, coming up onto all fours. So once we get here, we're gonna sink the hips back onto the heels and walk ourselves into a kneeling position. If you have a blanket, please grab it for padding underneath the knees. We're using this space as a transition as we come into a camel modification. So we dive back forward to curl the toes under. We lift the hips, bringing the hip bones right in line with the knees. So knees are right underneath the hips. If the toes being curled under feels uncomfortable, you can always drop the tops of the feet down to the earth. So glutes are firm and engaged, but not squeezing. We're not like thrusting our pelvis forward for stability. Stability comes from pressing into the tops of the feet or pressing into the toes if you're up on your toes. An engaged abdomen and bringing the hips right in line with the knees. So we're active through the hamstrings for stability in our upper legs. Chest is forward, gaze is forward. We're gonna inhale both arms up overhead. And if it's available to you, and you can try it. If you don't like it, whatever, come back here. We're gonna drop right hand to the right heel. If your foot is against the mat and that feels uncomfortable, bring the toes under just to bring the heel a little more up to you. Gaze is forward. Exhale, release the hand coming back up to your camel and we take it to the other side. Right arm stays up towards the sky as we drop the right hand 
or excuse me, the left hand to the left heel. If you can't reach, you can always curl the toes under. And then gaze comes up to the sky. Exhale, release and sink the hips down. We're diving forward onto all fours. Excellent. So coming to your tabletop, left leg kicks out long, then right leg kicks out long. We're at the top of a plank. We're here for one breath, engaging the abdomen, activating the psoas, strengthening this vital muscle. One more inhale. On the exhale, we take hips up high. See if you can really try to move from your core. So you're lifting from your abdomen instead of lifting from your back. Curl it out for a second if you need to. Now we're gonna come into our last big move of the day. There's no knees with this one. However, if you have any active or aggravating shoulder injuries, um, you may want to either skip this or do this down on the forearm. So I'll show you how once we get there. We inhale, right leg is lifting up high, three-legged dog. On the exhale, right knee is coming to left elbow as the upper body shifts into plank. Right foot then kicks out straight to the side. Okay, so we've got right leg across the body over to the left. Left leg is still strong behind us. We inhale, left arm is lifting up towards the sky. Revolved plank. You got this. If this is uncomfortable, you can always do this uh, down on the forearm if that's uncomfortable on the shoulder. But when we're here, abdomen's engaged, we're lifting the hips instead of dumping into the spine. And then to come out, we exhale. Go ahead and bring the left hand down first before we move from the hip, bringing the right to meet the left in downward facing dog. Here we go again. Other side, left leg lifts up high just to gain momentum here. Left leg bends, excuse me. Left knee to right elbow as we kick the left leg out straight. So the left leg should be parallel with the short edge of the mat, perpendicular to the long. As we inhale, right arm up to the sky, maybe you look up at your hand. We're strong through the left arm, lifting from the hips, engaging the abdomen. Exhale, lower right hand as we move from the hip, from the abdomen, and kick it right back up to downward facing dog. Take your feet nice and wide. One more inhale and exhale. We drop knees down onto the mat. We're gonna come onto our back. So however you wanna get there is up to you. You can either cross the ankles and roll right through or swing the legs off to one side and come onto the bum. When you get there, we're going all the way down. Knees to chest. So I never say the name of this pose <laughs> um, because I think of my oldest daughter who's still at the age where, where like gastronomical jokes are still funny. But this is called wind release pose. So great for the digestive system. Mm, moving air and fluid through the body. 
Go ahead and rock gently side to side. Maybe you can feel the top of that psoas connecting to the, to the uh, spine. On your next exhale, we'll release soles of the feet down to the ground. Soles kiss together, heel to heel, arch to arch, toes to toes. As we open the knees out wide. And then, so normally I say keep the low back flush with the mat. Today, I want you to rock the pelvis forward, creating this little back bend in the low back. We're going to tuck the, the elbows tight into the side body, hands rest on the top of the thighs. We're lifting chest up towards the sky and then chin gently up towards the sky. We've got, I don't know if you can see it from my t-shirt, but you should be able to slide your hand and have room between your low back and the mat. If that's not a movement that you're used to and you can only stand it for a little bit and then you need to tuck the pelvis, curling the tail up towards the ceiling to bring the low back flesh again with the mat for maybe one breath and then you rock it forward again. So almost like doing a reclined spinal flexion and extension like we do in our cat cows. One more breath cycle here. And on your exhale, we'll gently guide the knees up towards the sky by placing the hands on the outsides of the thighs. Knees are going to stay pointed up towards the ceiling. And feet are going to come hip width apart. Hands come right next to the hips. We're going to press into the back of our head and slightly lift the chest just to tuck those shoulder blades closer underneath the heart space. So the chest is really lifted. We inhale and on the exhale, we're going to take a bridge for two breaths. If this feels unstable, just do what you can, listen to your body. We inhale and on the exhale, we press into the soles of the feet and starting at the tail, it's as if we're sending this, the tail of the spine towards the backs of the knees and lifting from the glutes. So pressing into the soles, we're active through the hamstrings, firm through the glutes, soft in the belly, almost as if, we're, as if we are squeezing something between the knees. Chest lifts towards the chin and then chin lifts up towards the sky. Inhale. One more breath, you got it. And exhale, release, starting at the shoulder blades. Tail of the spine is the last thing to curl under. Left leg shoots out long. Right knee lifts up towards the chest as we catch the shin. We gently squeeze the right knee towards the right shoulder. And on the exhale, we cross right leg over the left for our reclined twist. And we're here for two breaths. Maybe you straighten the leg if that feels good. Maybe you're reaching the right arm out long. And we work to lengthen and release where the psoas connects to the spine.
So in Taoism, they call the psoas the seat of the soul because it's believed to be, the psoas is believed to surround almost like the epicenter of a major energy channel. And so if the psoas is tight, it restricts all the energy movement in the rest of the body. It restricts being connected to the earth. Inhale and on the exhale, we'll roll back through center, ab, or excuse me, belly button to abdomen. Right leg shoots out long, left leg catches. And squeeze left knee towards the left shoulder. And exhale, left knee crosses over the midline towards the right side. We work to keep the left shoulder pinned down to the ground. If you're coming up off of that left shoulder, come out of your twist slightly until it's pinned down to the ground. So, moral of the story, everything that we do, every move that we make, the psoas is involved. Exhale draws you back through center. Let's shoot both legs out long. Hands come down by the hips, either palms towards the sky or planted firmly down into the ground. The psoas is involved in literally every movement that we do. Yet we neglect it and forget about it all the time. Being overstretched, weak, or compressed and shortened can be the reason for so many health and pain issues. Our hips are a place that naturally holds on to emotion. And so uh, the psoas can build up quite easily with how deep in the body it is. So let's give this area a little more love and bring some awareness to all that it does for us. If you have extra minutes today to stay in Shavasana, it's Friday, so please do. Otherwise, we'll end our practice today uh, by bringing the hands together at the heart space or up to the third eye, or if that is a little too out there or reverent for you for our yoga practice, that's fine too. You can always bring one hand to the belly, one hand to the heart space. And lastly, thank yourself for showing up today. You're doing good work and showing up for ourselves is sometimes the most difficult thing. So proud of you. And I'll see you next week. <laughs>